I hope you won't be discouraged, Professor Brooke, if you find yourself with a small class. American students seem to flock to the easy courses. Well, it's much the same in England, Professor Guthrie. <laughs> Thank you so much for showing me around. No. <laughs> <laughs> professor Ronald Brooke, exchange professor from England, will conduct a series of lectures on Greek mythology. <laughs> How about advanced economics, Ted? You ought to learn how to take care of your old man's dough. Uh-uh, mm, he knows how to do that. Uh. <laughs> hey, fellas, how about this Greek mythology? Sounds like a pushover. Pushover. Let's ask this guy. He looks like a postgrad. Uh, say, did you ever take this Greek course? Know anything about it? A little. Mythology, Professor. Probably some grumbling old fluff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he's got a long white beard. And very likely moth-eaten. With a monocle. Pip, pip, carry on, dash it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about it, pal? Is the course stiff? Should we take it? Oh, I'd say it was a, a pushover. See what I tell you. Let's all register in it. Well, what are we waiting for? Uh, you gonna be there? Oh, I shan't miss a class. Good. What if I should have brought a notebook? No, pillow. This is where Mrs. Dayton's little boy catches up on his sleep. Gentlemen, I know you'll be happy to meet Brand's new exchange professor, Professor Ronald Brooke from England. How do you do? And I want to congratulate all of you on taking a course that, although difficult, will, I am certain, prove to be fascinating. Thank you, sir. You know, this incident reminds me of one of old Aesop's fables, the one about the wolf in sheep's clothing, of course. Only in this instance, the wolf turns out to be an exchange professor from England. Of course, I realize how disappointed you must be that I haven't a long white beard, and that however much of an old fluff I may be, it isn't apparent to the naked eye. I hope. All you have to do is to pass a rather stiff examination at the end of the term. Now, before I hear too many groans, let me say that I'm going to begin the course by exploring the nightlife of Cytherea, a rather high-spirited wench of ancient times. As a matter of fact, so high-spirited that students have been known to take up Greek just in order to read it in the original. Ah. Well, hip, hip, dash it all. Shall we carry off? <laughs> and remember, your waitresses, not entertainers. No unnecessary conversation with the students. Uh, put your legs together. They are. Uh, some of you may have heard that the last year, two of the girls married rich college boys. This term, both of them asked for their jobs back. So let that be it. Well? Did you shorten that skirt? No, ma'am. I starched it. Starched it? Mm. Starched it. Huh. Let out the hem. The students are supposed to keep their minds on their studies. And you girls must remember that we're only here to satisfy their appetite for food. That's all. You may go. Is it up here for me? Thank you. Jenny. Could I have some tea? Black or green? Uh, Ceylon, of course. Oh, Ceylon. And marmalade and toast. White wheat, raisin, or Russian rye? I beg pardon? Do you want white bread, or Russian rye bread, or raisin bread, or... Oh, yes, plain bread? white bread, oh. please. What time is it, miss? I don't know. This isn't my table. I see you've discovered Brand's favorite tea room, Professor. Yes. looks American. Sorry, I thought you were looking at my notes. Your tea, sir. What's this, a surgical dressing? You dunk it in the water. You what? Dunk as in donut. Haven't you ever dunked a donut? Should I have? Oh, if you haven't, you missed a lot of fun. Look, it's easy. 
And then you drink it? Unless it's too hot. Oh. Oh, I know. Hmm? I bet you like it the English way. Well, I give you that idea. I guess it's the way you talk. <laughs> It's all right. He's not a student. I'll bring you toast and marmalade right away. I say, could I be of any help? Oh, no, thank you. I was just practicing. Well, when you finished, uh, may I have my paper? Oh. I'm sorry. I thought you were through with it. No, I followed you because I was afraid you were running off with my Greek. Uh, no, those notes there. Oh. Is this girl a friend of yours? I wish she was. Good heavens, why? Maybe she could tell me how to do it. Do what? Go to Paris. Do you mind if I sit down? Do you mean to say that you want to emulate the... <laughs> that is, be like this young woman? Why not? She's on her way to Paris. I'm afraid I don't quite understand. Well, look, there's a story like this in the newspapers almost every day. Yeah. You see, the boy always promises to marry the girl, and the boy's father always says no. Then he always gives the girl money to give up the boy, and the girl always goes to Paris. But, my dear child, that's blackmail. And rather a drastic means of getting to Paris. Oh, it sounds very simple to me. The boy has a good time, and the girl has a good time, and the father's so rich he never misses the money. Yes, but it's hardly cricket. And, you know, I don't even know your name. Jenny. After my Swedish grandmother. Well, Jenny, even if your reasoning were sound, your scheme would still be a little illegal. Oh, I don't see why. Now, let's pretend that you're a rich man's son, and you're in love with me. That's legal, isn't it? Oh, yes, absolutely. But your father says no, and uh, so he pays me money to... Uh oh, but wait a minute. That's where it stops being legal. Oh, just at the interesting part. What's your name? Ronald Brooke. Ronnie, after my English grandfather. That's my shift. The geometry class will be in, and they'll want buckets of coffee to wake them up. Did you ever hear the Aesop fable about the sick lion? Well, all the animals used to come to inquire about his health. One day, the fox came, and the lion said, Oh, dear, I feel so weak today. Please come inside and hold my hand. But the fox noticed that although the lion said he was sick, he was really very fat and that all of the footprints led into the cave, and none of them led out. The moral, my dear Jenny, is never venture into anything, unless you can see your way out. Oh, don't worry. I'll always look for a way out. Mm. Bye, Professor. Jenny, are you hurt? No. No, I'm all right. It's just my knee. What the devil do you mean by coming down the street at that rate of speed? Sorry, Professor. Sorry? Do you realize you might have killed this young woman? Not a chance. These brakes will stop on a dime. The trouble with you, Dayton, your father has too much money. You think you're a privileged character. It's young fellows like you that... Professor, please. After all, I am all right, and these brakes are good. Say, thanks. Is there anything I can do? Well, I'm a little late for work, and I should change my stockings. It's too far to walk. Well, may I? Oh, thank you. for me and no cracks. <laughs> good afternoon, Jenny. I'm not Jenny. Oh, good afternoon anyway. Jenny's gone to Hansonville. She won't be back until tonight. Hansonville? Oh, oh. Here I am again, folks. It's your old question and answer man. Now, today we have a special quiz on Hansonville. And question number one is, why did Jenny go to Hansonville? Because Ted Dayton went to Hansonville. Correct. Hey! Marvelous. The guy's a genius. All right, question number two. What town, beginning with H, has a parson who charges only two bucks? Well, let's see. 
Hoboken. Ah, Hoboken. Hey, you're mussing my hair. All right, students. Hands 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 very good, very good, that's right. And now we come to the brain twister of the evening. What famous professor of Greek is slowly losing his favorite waitress? Come on now, professor, uh, who is it? <laughs> Me. Hooray! Ted, I've been an indulgent father. I've given you everything you asked for. How was I to know you'd be fool enough to propose marriage to a... A waitress. You say my son promised to marry you? Yes. Gosh, Dad, it was just fun. I didn't really propose to her. But he did promise to marry me. You can't prove it. But I have letters. You mean Ted proposed to you in writing? Yes, he did. In every letter, every day. Did you propose to her in writing? No. No, sir. We'll see who's lying. Let's see those letters. Well? Uh, I guess I didn't bring them with me. <laughs> I thought you were lying. Did you hear that? No, you don't. You're going to tell your little story to a judge. Oh, I wouldn't care to, thank you. Yeah, just a minute. I've officer. got to do my duty. She's a blackmailer. Yeah. I think we've got her scared plenty. You better run while you've got the chance. I'll try and square things with the officer. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dayton. I'll never forgive you, forget you for this. Never mind that. See that you get out of brand tonight, or we'll make that town so hot you can scramble eggs on the sidewalk. Yes. Any report on my call to Hansonville? Mr. Dayton and his son left the hotel. Cancel the call, will you please? Hello. So there you are. Uh, oh, Professor, I'm in such trouble. Well, don't stand there making puddles. Come in. Get those wet things off. You'll catch cold. I had to see you. I've been expecting you. You have? Here, put these on. So you went to Hansonville. How'd you know? And now you're in trouble. Yes. Well, tell me the whole sad story. Well, it was just the way you said. I forgot about the sick lion and walked right into his den. And Mr. Dayton showed me the way out. He was a little cross. I say, you didn't ask him for money. Oh, yes. That's part of my plan. You remember, don't you? Yes, I remember. And then when I couldn't show him the letters. Do you mean to say that you told him Ted had written you letters? Sure, I had them in my bag all the time. You... You had letters from Ted in your bag, and you didn't show them to him? I started to, and then I remembered all the things you told me, and... Oh, I got the funniest feeling in my stomach. In your stomach? Yeah, it felt like this. Like what? Like this. That was a flutter, Jenny. That was your conscience talking. Oh, does that mean I'll never be able to do anything wrong? Not with your solar plexus. No, Jenny, I'm afraid you're doomed to be a good girl. You'll feel better after a good night's sleep. And tomorrow we'll talk this whole thing out. Oh, I can't. I've got to leave town tonight. If I don't, they'll scramble eggs on the sidewalk. Mr. Dayton said so. Do you mind if I have a drink? Well, I guess there's nothing left to do but go back home to Maple Leaf. I think that's a very good idea, Jenny. You do? Yes, I do. You go home and forget there's any royal road to wealth. Be yourself, Jenny. Follow your flutter, and someday the right man will come along. Not Maple Leaf. Yes, even in Maple Leaf. But, Jenny. Keep away from young men with large cars and small characters, and don't accept things from them. Nothing? Well, flowers, fruit, and candy. And hospitality? Only of the right sort, Jenny. Well, Jenny, don't be discouraged. Good girls go to Paris, too. If I go home to Maple Leaf, there, there won't be anybody to make your tea for you, the English way. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm leaving myself tomorrow. You are? Yes, I'll finish my lectures. And then, Jenny, I'm going to be married. Go back to England. 
Married? Yes, even college professors get married. Well, I suppose there's any reason why they shouldn't. I'm going to get married myself someday. French Duke or something. Jenny, remember what I told you. Is she the one? Yes, that's Sylvia. What's she like? Oh, she's charming. Beautiful, as you can see. Well, I just better get my shoes on. Oh, Jenny. Here's something I wanted to give you before I left. Aesop's Fables. That's what you're always talking about, isn't it? Yes. It's a wonderful present. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, what time's your train leave? Nine o'clock. Dear, you'd better hurry. I'm all packed. Have you enough money? I'm going to buy seven dollars worth of tickets and thumb the rest of the way. Thumb? Get rides like this. Oh, but you can't do that. Well, if I don't get any rides, I only have to walk two dollars worth. Uh, here. That isn't flowers, fruit, or candy. Oh, no, no, of course not, but... Well, this is different. You and I are old friends. Here now. You consider that alone. You can pay me back a little at a time. You're awfully good. You've done so much for me. Well, I like you, Jenny. I like you, too. Uh, you better go now. You'll miss your train. Bye. Goodbye, Jenny. Oh, well, Jenny, here's my address in London. Will you write to me? Yes. Bye. Goodbye, Jenny. Well, oh, Jenny, wait. You better take us some brother. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye, Jenny. I don't suppose you'll ever come to Mason. Oh, no. No. Bye. Bye. Goodbye, Jenny. leaving tonight. I thought you... No, no, no. I'll take you to the station. It won't take long. I'll be right over. I'd like a ticket to Maple Leaf, Minnesota, please. Can you imagine anyone wanting to vote on Maple Leaf? Where to, miss? New York City. Thank you. This way to New York train, miss. Hello, Jenny. Hello. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. This is Tom Brand, Miss Jenny Swanson. How do you do? Brand? Is this your university? No, it's my grandfather's. Oh. It's funny I never saw you in the tea room. Oh, Jenny. Tom is my future brother-in-law. He came down to dedicate the gymnasium for his grandfather. Oh, boy. Don't miss your train, Jenny. Oh, no. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jenny. <laughs> you see, I, I'm sort of a father confessor to her. You're lucky I have a broad-minded system. Well, tell her I'm leaving right after my last lecture tomorrow. Okay. So long. Goodbye, Tom. You're a funny girl, Jenny. You read Aesop's fables, and you won't accept anything but candy, fruit, and flowers. And hospitality of the right sort. Haven't you any vices? I did have, but Professor Brooke reformed me. Where did you meet Ronnie, anyway? At the Butterfly Tea Room. I waited on tables there. Oh, it was a lovely job. Uh, and you lost him. I had to leave town. You what? I had to leave. They told me if I didn't, they'd get the town so hot you could scramble eggs on the sidewalk. What the devil did you do? I tried to blackmail a college boy. Blackmail? Say, don't you know you're not supposed to mention a thing like that? 
It wasn't successful. Well, maybe you can try again during the winter term. My flutter won't let me. You what? There's something in here that tells me if I'm right or wrong. If it's still, then it's all right. But if it flutters, it's wrong. The flutter will be an awful handicap in New York. Oh, I shouldn't be on my way to New York. I should be on my way to Maple Leaf, Minnesota. But when I went to that ticket window and thought of working in the grocery store again, waiting on that old Mrs. Perkins, and taking care of the Hopkins children at night, I... Well, I just bought a ticket to New York. Well, um, didn't you get a flutter? Well, that was only half a flutter. I, I thought maybe it was something I ate. Jenny, I like you. But you shouldn't have fooled around with those penny ante college boys. Why didn't you wait for me? Are you sure you're rich? Well, my grandfather just gave away another million. Of course, he can take it off his income tax. Oh, Tom, you have such nice blue eyes. Oh, oh dear. Excuse me, miss. Would you like me to make up your birth? You was not before, ain't you? Oh, it's bedtime. And your drawing room's ready, Mr. Brand. Call us in the observation car, Sam. And knock before you enter. Yes, sir. Hey, let us know how you come out. Wow, wow. That's nice, isn't it? Won't your shoes clean, Mr. Brand? No, thank you. Mistake, Miss? No. This is hospitality. Ah. Yeah. Hospitality. Here it is, Jenny. Music, gaiety, beautiful women. Where Park Avenue meets Broadway in an atmosphere of magic romance. I bet this place has a lot of dirty laundry. Did anyone ever tell you that you're very lovely? Uh-huh. You did in the last place. Oh, I'm repeating myself. Oh, it doesn't need changing yet. Look, it doesn't show. What time is it? I have to get up early and look for a job, you know. Waiter, check. Yes. Hello, Tom, darling. Hello. When are you going away? Just get back. Now, do have a nice trip. It's my mother. Your father looks awfully young. That's not my father. That's Paul Kingston, my mother's boyfriend. You paying for everybody? <laughs> Keep it. Thank you, sir. Jenny, we'll get my car and we'll do the town. Must we? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Bye, Louis. Here. Oh, thank you, Mr. Bryant. No, no, champagne. Crackers and milk for me, please. The only place left after this is the gutter. Don't get me wrong. It's a great place here. Give me anything I want. Anything at all. You're wanted in the back room, Mr. Brown. Oh, what's me? Mr. Schultz. Oh. Excuse me, Jenny. My past is catching up with me. When do you finish up the hospital, Dennis? I'll be a full-fledged doctor in a week. Then only three more years of starvation while I build up a practice. You're going to change your mind, Sylvia, and starve with me. You know, even when we were children, you always said you were going to be a doctor. Your face. What's the matter with it? Oh, nothing. I, I thought I saw it once in, in a picture. Sylvia, <laughs> darling, congratulations. I understand you to be married next week. Is this the lucky man? Uh, no, darling. I'm only the man she loves. 
Oh, dear. How very droll. <laughs> well, goodbye, darling. I hope we'll be very happy. Why did you say that, Dennis? I don't think that's funny. No, I guess it wasn't. But it's the truth. Sylvia, why don't you tell Olaf you're in love with me? Oh, don't be so difficult, Dennis. People have been disinherited before. They still breathe and walk around on two feet. But Olaf would make such a thorough job of it. What do you want? Please pass the salt. Let's get out of here. <clears throat> Waiter. Yes, sir. Check, please. Hello, Tom. Aren't you going to buy us a drink? No, Come along, Tom. Oh, oh, Excuse me. Remember me? I'm your sister. Oh, hello, Sylvia. Hiya, Dennis. Mom. Just saw Mom over at El Morocco. How is she doing? She was holding her own. Say, you'd better stay away from Olaf when you get home. He's on the warpath again. Ah, that's... Come on. I'm oh, sorry, Jenny. A little matter of pressing business. A man named Schultz pressing me for $5,000. Gambling. Only I didn't know they were playing for keeps. Tom, was that your sister? Yep. Now you've seen the famous House of Brand with her hair down. No. But, but she's going to marry Professor Brooke. That's the program. Tom, I don't understand. You mean that man with her? We all live together in the same house as kids, only Dennis had to use the back stairs. Back stairs? Great guy, though. He worked his way through medical school. Tom, is your sister in love with Professor Brooke? Jenny, you're old-fashioned. But I like it. Mr. Brand, what is the trouble? Trying to slip me a Mickey, eh? Poisoning an old customer. Come on, Jenny, let's get out of here. I'm sorry, Mr. Brand, I bring you another bottle. Trying to give me the business. Are you sure you live here? Looks vaguely familiar. This way. You have an awful lot of explaining to do in the morning. Jenny Swanson. But what are you doing here? Well, I, you don't have to yell at me. Who's yelling? Well, what on earth are you doing out of bed? I spend a hundred thousand dollars a year on your stupid doctors, and you let strangers wander around my house at night waking me up. Well, Father, this isn't a stranger. This is uh, Jenny. Uh, yes, of course. It's Jenny. She's a friend of Sylvia's, an old, old friend. Yet they were a Briarmont together. They played on the same uh, basketball team, didn't you, darling? Oh, 
Friend of Sylvia's, huh? Yes. Well, so then you're here for the wedding. Yes, that's it. She's one of Sylvia's bridesmaids. Then where is Sylvia? Why isn't she here looking after her guests instead of leaving them to wander around the halls alone? Now you see what you've done? My throat is sore again. Mr. Brand, if your throat is sore, it's very silly to stand around these drafty halls. You don't have to tell me that. Any fool knows as much. Well, why didn't you stay in bed? Oh, we spend a fortune trying to heat this house, and it's cold as an icebox. Well, you should have more blankets on your bed. Swedes need to sweat. By golly, she's right. I haven't had a good sweat since I left Minnesota. Carolyn, send for the doctor. My throat is killing me. Oh, you don't need a doctor for that. I can fix your throat in a second. Oh, you could. Yes. All you need to do is put hot lard and turpentine on a piece of red flannel rag and tie it around your throat. It feels better right away. Oh, well, that's silly. What's silly about it? My grandmother used to do it. Yes, and a good old Swedish drink like uh, Akavi. That always helps. By golly, now you're talking. Get chambers. Oh, Father, you'd better let me call Dr. Brown. Call Chambers. Oh, Chambers. Strip of red flannel and a bottle of Aka Vit. Yes, madame. Right away. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. Hello, Chambers. Anything wrong, oh. Chambers? Oh, no, miss. The phone from upstairs for some hot lard. If it's Tom, don't pay any attention to him. It's your mother. I, I hope you won't mind the smell. Probably Mother's latest beauty wrinkle. I've got the lard heating, and I know where the turpentine is. But there's no red flannel. Not a bit of red flannel in the house, sir. Oh, dear, I thought they'd given up treasure hunts. Get the turpentine. Yes, I'll get the red flannel. Did they get you up too, Jeffers? Yes, Miss Sylvia. It seems to be very urgent, the question of a strip of red flannel. How are you, Dad? Fine, Dennis. Did you fix up the guest room for Jenny? Yes, sir. Well, see that you take good care of her, Chambers. Fill her up. But, sir, this is the second bottle of Icovit, and you know what the doctor said. Shut up, you dummapoiter! Shh! He doesn't understand Swedish, and quit shouting so much. That's what gives you high blood pressure, and anyway, people pay more attention to you when you whisper. They do? Yes. Please, Mr. Brand. Get out. Yes, sir. How's that? Oh, fine. Let's go, Let's go. Where's Mr. Jeffers? In the kitchen. Mr. Jeffers? Yes? Mr. Brand is coming down to breakfast. Hurry, everybody. Why? He never eats breakfast with the family. He hasn't been down to breakfast in three years. Mr. Tom, your grandfather's coming down to breakfast. Miss Sylvia? Your grandfather's coming down to breakfast. Mrs. Brand? Morning, Jeffers. Good morning, sir. Uh, well, where is everybody? They're all late. Uh, yes, sir. Fine family I've got. The first time I've been down to breakfast in three years. And everybody's late. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jeffers. Oh, good morning, Grandfather. I don't know why people can't be on time. Ronnie. <coughs> Ronnie will be in on the 9 o'clock train. Good morning, Father. You're late, Caroline. Hello. Hello. Did you sleep well? Stop that racket. Yes. Best sleep I've had in 20 years. Tom, I tried to find you before breakfast. I want you to meet an old school chum of Sylvia's, Jenny. Swanson. Of course. They went to school together. They played on the same hockey team. Oh, and Tom, isn't it exciting? Jenny's going to be Sylvia's bridesmaid at the wedding. 
Bridesmaid? Yes, you know, dear. It's the one that walks along down the aisle. It's just like the best man, only it's a woman, and we're going to have twelve. Stop that foolish chatter, Carla. Now, what do you think would be a good thing for a sick man to have for breakfast? Herring. You hear that, Ada? One herring. I don't believe there's such an article in a house, sir. What kind of a house is this that hasn't got a herring? Good morning, Grandfather. Oh, Sylvia, darling. Now, are you going to be surprised? Now, here's your old roommate, Jenny. You remember? From Briarmont. Why, you're the... How do you do? And Jenny's come all the way from Maryland just to be one of your bridesmaids. Now, isn't that sweet of her? Oh, very. So nice to see you again. Oh, is it? Well, you don't act like it. You modern girls are certainly cold fish. It wasn't that way when I was young. Oh, Grandfather, it's just that it was such a surprise to me. It's the way you brought her up. She has no manners. Who is she? One of your roommates? So you're from Maryland, eh? No, Minnesota. Carolyn always gets things wrong. A fine state, Minnesota. I came from there myself. I never should have left there. I started 40 years ago in Minnesota as a lumberjack. I remember the time I rescued two men from a log jam. Biscuit, Jenny. Now, don't change the subject. Mr. Brooke is arriving, Miss Sylvia. How are you, darling? Fine. I'm sorry I couldn't get to the train. Well, bring him in here. What are you doing out there? How are you, Ronnie, my boy? Splendid, thank you. And how are you, sir? Hello, Tom. Hi, Ronnie. Darling, you sit right over there. Yeah. How are you, Mrs. Brand? Well, I'm fine. So far. Get me. Jenny, come here. Oh, but you don't know our Jenny. Miss Jenny Swanson, Mr. Ronald Brooke. It's the lucky man. How do you do? It's nice to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. You know, I knew a family named Swanson once. They lived in a town called Maple Leaf. Jenny and Sylvia went to Barland together. Oh, really? I would have guessed that you'd just come from a college town. Oh, yes. Jenny was on the, on the hockey team. Oh, yes, of course. You recently played Hansonville, didn't you? Took an awful licking, as I remember it. Yes, I did. But you can't always win. Ronnie, I didn't know that you were interested in women's sports. Oh, yes. Yes, I've followed some of the players all over the country. Did you have a nice trip, Ronnie? Yes. Did you? Yes. Oh, he likes TV English way. Well, that is, all Englishmen like TV English way. Say, our Jenny's a bright girl. She knew right off that you were English. <laughs> yes, indeed. And now, after all these years, Jenny's going to be Sylvia's bridesmaid. <coughs> Bridesmaids? Didn't you know they had bridesmaids at weddings? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. The word always makes me jump. Ever since my great aunt Agatha had a bridesmaid who went in for blackmail. Oh, excuse me. I'm a little bit nervous today. I was out late last night. Oh, you were? And who kept you out late? Well, it wasn't Tom, because when I came in, his light was out. I thought I heard you sneaking in last night. Oh, it wasn't me. It must have been Dennis and... Hey, what's got into this family? Now, there's something fishy going on around here. Whisper. Caroline, what are you trying to hide from me? I don't know, Father. I wasn't listening. Biscuit, anybody? Thank you. More coffee, sir. What is everybody whispering about? Now this family is trying to keep something from me. I insist on knowing what's happening right under my nose. You better sit down. I'll sit down when I find out. It may be His oh. face is turning purple, like my uncle's, and he went out like a light. What's all this, this about? You tell him, Doctor. 
Oh, you're not a doctor, are you? You're a professor. Get him some water, somebody. And he needs air. Oh, oh my here. goodness. I knew this would happen. Hey. Yes, he, needs, he needs fresh air. Okay. Hey. I, I... But I ought to go. You see how he looked. He feels he's... He's... Jenny, what are you doing here? I'm a bridesmaid. How did you get in this house? I thought you'd be surprised. Well, I shouldn't be. I saw you getting chummy with Tom Brand on that train. Oh, that's not fair. You introduced me to him, and all I took was flowers, fruit, and candy, and your kind of hospitality. What happened on that train? Well, we got very friendly, and I slept in his drawing room. What? Yeah, Tom had to double up to get my berth, but he said he didn't mind. Go on. Well, when we got to New York, Tom drank a little bit too much, and the policeman said... Policeman? Yes, the policeman was going to take him to jail, so I brought him home and put him to bed. Jenny, why did you have to pick on this family to blackmail? Oh, I didn't. It was an accident. I mean... But you did find out that Tom's family has money, didn't you? Yes. Oh, yes, they have millions. Jenny... Mother, it's ridiculous having her for my bridesmaid. But it was a marvelous excuse, and the first thing I could think of. Father really put the words right into my mouth. She'll be the only decent bridesmaid you'll have. Now, Sylvia, we've got to go through with this. Yes, do you want to get me kicked out? Look here, Jenny, I can't let you stay here. I don't know what you're going to do next. Neither do I. I'm just waiting to see what I'm going to do. I do know what you're going to do. You're going to leave here. Find some excuse, any excuse. I don't care what. Eight. Come in. Feeling better? What do you want? Well, I didn't know you were busy. I wanted to ask you about something. I'll go out. You might as well stay. You seem to be running this family anyway. Sit down. What is it now? I just had a notice from the bank. It seems I'm overdrawn. How much? Quite a bit. $5,000. How in tarnation did you ever spend $5,000? Oh, and some things. Get out of my sight, you insolent young pup. Get out before I lose my temper. $5,000. When I was your age, I was living on $3 a week. Use molasses instead of sugar in my coffee. Get out! Come on, let's play. He thinks money grows on trees. It's about time I kicked that selfish loafer out. Let him find out what hard work really means. Of course, I think you're all wrong about Tom. He's one of the nicest young men I've ever met. Oh, you like him, huh? Yes, I do. Of course, I think he needs to settle down a bit. Well, maybe you're right about Tom, Jenny. He is a fine young man when you come to think of it. Upstanding. He has a fine future, Jenny. Then you'll give him the 5000 I will not. But I think you're right about the settling down part. And I believe you're just the girl to do it. Oh, that's silly. Tom doesn't think about me that way, Sixes. Don't be stupid. And it's up to you to see that he starts thinking about you that way. Eight. Hey, wait a minute. You can't take it with an eight. That's my bill and my six blocks. Oh, yes, I can. Six and two make eight. But uh, you can't add to my bill. You're cheating. Cheating? Yes. Why, you, you. Look uh, out now. You lose your breath. No, I won't. I want it for what I have to tell you. Nobody ever accused me of cheating before. Well, they're afraid to. But if someone doesn't tell you about a bad habit, it just grows and grows on you until you, until you even start cheating people in business. <laughs> oh, cheating in business. <laughs> That's good. Where would you get in business if you didn't take advantage of the other fella? Here's an old friend of mine who'd cut my throat for a nickel. Now, he wants to give some land to my university. Uh, cut in on my glory. But I fooled him. I took an option on the land myself. Now he'll have to come to me. Did you say an old friend? Yeah, an old scoundrel named Dayton. Dayton? Does he have a son? Yeah, Ted Dayton. Probably a chip off the old block. The father made his money in cars. Bad ones, too. But they have good brakes. Uh, well, well, what, what if Dayton is a crook? That's no sign you have to be. And besides, this is my dollar. Hey, what about another game? You ought to give me a chance to get my dollar back. Hello, Jenny. 
Have a good time today? Oh, yes. I've been gambling with Olaf. I won, too. Jenny, what did you say you'd been doing with Olaf? Gambling. Look here, Jenny, this has gone too far. I insist that you give back every penny. How much did you win? A dollar. Oh. Well, what are you giving it to me for? That's for my fare to Maple Leaf. Now I only owe you $49. Oh, thanks, Jenny, but there's no hurry. Nevertheless, you'll have to leave here. I haven't thought of a good excuse yet. Well, I have. You're going to get a telegram from your mother. I haven't got a mother. Oh. Well, from your aunt, then. Aunt... What's a good Swedish name? Helga. Well, your aunt Helga is going to break her leg or have a nervous breakdown or something. And then you'll have to leave for Maple Leaf immediately. It'll be better for you too, Jenny. It will, really. Send a telegram. Yes, it goes to Miss Jenny Swanson, 1417 Larchwood Road, Long Island, New York. Jeffers, have any telegrams come? No, sir. Thanks. Telegram, Miss Swanson. Hope it isn't bad news. It's from my Aunt Helga. She hopes I'm having a good time, and she says I can stay as long as I want to. And she sends her love. May I get you a liqueur, Jenny? No, thank you. I don't care for anything. That's fine. Why didn't you read what was in that wire the way I sent it to you? I got a flutter. You should have. Lying about it. It wasn't that. It's just that I haven't got an Aunt Helga. Now, see here, Jenny. I know perfectly well your reasons for being in this house, but let me warn you. If I catch you looking in Tom's direction, I'll tell Olaf all about you. I will. Shall we dance, Sylvia? Yes. drinking for one night. Let's take a ride. Oh, Tom, I'm awfully sorry, but I already have a date for tonight. Who with? With uh, Paul. With Paul? Oh, Kingston, don't you dare leave. I'm sorry. It seems I can't leave right now. Do you mind? Well, that settles that. He's still out with Jenny. I hope she hoops him. You hope she does what? Of course, he doesn't deserve her, but she'd make him a great little wife. Wife? What are you talking about? Jenny. She'd make a nice wife for Tom. Well, yes, of course, she's a nice girl and all that, but you hardly know her. I don't have to. I like her. And Tom loves her. Look here, Mr. Brand. There's something I must tell you. Go ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you this. It's rather a difficult thing to tell you. I... I don't exactly... You don't exactly what? Well, I don't exactly... What's the matter? I've got a funny feeling in my stomach. Oh. 
Hi, Jeffers. Good morning, sir. Has Miss Swanson come down yet? Yes, sir. She's gone for a walk. Oh, she has? With Mr. Kingston, sir. Oh. Oh, Jeffers, just a moment. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Jeffers. Miss Swanson at breakfast? No, sir. She's gone for a walk. Oh, she has? With Mr. Kingston, sir. asked Jenny to marry me last night. You did? She said no. Ronnie, I wonder if you'd talk to her for me. Well, uh... She puts a lot of faith in what you say. I know she likes me a lot, but for some reason she keeps holding back. That's fine. Uh, is that so? And all of us all for it, surprisingly enough. I'll speak to her all right. Thanks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 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 Stomach better this morning? No, it's not quite what it should be. Oh. Where's Jenny? She... She's gone for a walk. Alone? With Paul Kingston. Paul Kingston. And you call yourselves men. Where are you going? I'm going to find Jenny. Fine fiancé you are. Why aren't you out walking with her? Come along. Help me find her. Coming, Ronnie? No, no, of course not. Oh, please, Mr. Kingston. Oh, please, Mr. One Kingston. Jimmy. Oh, please, Mr. Kingston. Oh. oh, please, Mr. Kingston. Oh. <laughs> Oh, call me Paul. <laughs> Mr. Kingston, let's keep on walking. You know it stimulates your heart. Oh, just being with you does that. Please don't misunderstand about last night. It was awful nice of you to help me pretend. Oh, you didn't do so badly yourself. Well, I had to. Professor Ronnie doesn't want me to go out with Tom. What's he got to do with He's it? He's afraid I'll try to blackmail Tom. <laughs> but that's absurd. Oh, no, it isn't. He knows I tried it once with another rich boy. You better watch out. I am a blackmailer. <laughs> How charming. I'd be afraid if I went such slim picking. Oh, oh. Oh, I wouldn't dream of interfering with you and Carolyn. People say you're stewing. Oh, but Caroline is a very dear friend of mine. But she's more the motherly type. Oh, but you, Jenny, you're different. You're not like any other woman I've ever known before. You're a dream, a poem. You're like a dewy white flower waiting to be crushed. Jenny, why are you running? I always run before breakfast. What? It stimulates your heart. Come on. Jenny, stop this foolishness. I want to talk to you. What do you mean by worming a proposal out of Tom last night? How'd you know? Well, it isn't my fault that Tom asked me to marry him. Oh, it isn't. I suppose you didn't make yourself as pretty as possible last night. Why, you, you caught him like a rat in a trap. Did I really look pretty? You were wonderful. You looked radiant. You you were positively starry-eyed. I tell you, I won't have it. Oh, Jenny, don't you realize how empty a loveless marriage can be? Yes, I do. That's why I told Tom I couldn't marry him. I hope you mean that, Jenny. Paris must wait until... until you feel about someone the way Sylvia feels about me. Sylvia does... Sylvia... What? What about Sylvia? Oh, nothing. Oh, now, look here. That's no answer. You started to say something. Aesop says wise men say nothing in dangerous times. What? Yes, sir? My name is Schultz. I want to see Mr. Brand, the old one. Uh, well... I'm Mr. Brand's secretary. Come with me, Mr. Schultz. Come in, Mr. Schultz. Sit down, Mr. Schultz. Thanks. Now, what can I do for you? I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to your boss. Well, I'm Mr. Brand's personal secretary, and I take care of everything for him. Then take care of these. His grandsons I owe you. $5,000 worth. Well, you just leave them with me, and I'll take care of them for you. Not so fast, sister. Where's the dough? I'll bring it to your office tomorrow. I don't know about that. 
Maybe I'd better see Mr. Brand personally. No. No, I'll be there and I'll have the $5,000. Really, I will. Aesop says where there's a will, there's a way. I don't care who you get it from, but bring it in cash. Yes, Mr. Schultz. Hope Aesop knows what he's talking about. Jenny. Jenny. Oh, you're scared. Shh. I've been in an accident. We ran down a man. I don't know how badly he's hurt. Oh, Sylvia. I was with Dennis. Oh, Sylvia. I was seeing him for the last time. After the accident, people gathered around the car. There was an attorney who took charge of everything. He promised not to notify the police. He wanted our names, of course, and, and I couldn't give mine. So I, I told him I was Jenny Swanson. Oh, Sylvia. It isn't yeah. only because of Ronnie, Jenny. Olaf would cut me off without a cent if he knew I'd been out with Dennis just before I was to be married. You must help me, Jenny. Now, Dennis is waiting in the greenhouse. He has the hat and coat I wore tonight. You put them on. Come in the front way. Ring the bell so Jeffers will see you. Tell him... Tell him you lost your key. Dennis is in the greenhouse with your hat and coat. And Jeffers was... I'll do it for $5,000. But that's blackmail. It is. Wait a minute. Yes. Yes, I want $5,000. Why, you dirty little cheat. I suppose I have no choice in the matter. I'll give it to you out of my allowance. Some each week. Oh, no. No, I need it right away. All right. I'll give you a check. Thanks. Change coats. Anything else? No. Except I think you're a coward. Any man is who's in love with a girl and won't fight for her. I wish it were as simple as all that. Up with your hands. On your feet. What are you doing here at this time of night? Well... I was just picking some flowers. Flowers last longer if you pick them at night. Jenny, stop picking those orchids. Professor Ronnie. Yes, Professor Ronnie. Jenny, I saw a man leaving here. What are you up to? Well, everybody's been so nice to me, I thought it'd be fun to surprise them with orchids on the table in the morning. Everybody likes orchids, and I thought of it before I went to bed. You're lying, aren't you? Yes, Professor Ronnie. Jenny, who was that man in here with you? Dennis. Dennis? Why, that's Jeffers' son. Well, I haven't been feeling very well, and he's a doctor, you know, only he isn't a doctor yet for a few days, and while he's waiting for his license, he told me to come to the greenhouse, and he'd, he'd diagnose me for nothing. You're lying again, aren't you? Yes, Professor Ronnie. Jenny, isn't it possible for you to tell the truth? No, but I wish you'd believe me. How can I? Good heavens, when I told you to steer clear of Tom, that wasn't a signal to go after every other male in sight. You don't seem to know the difference between right and wrong, Jenny. You haven't any moral sense. I'd be a much happier man if I'd never met you. Why, Professor Ron? Jenny, we used to talk things over. We used to confide in each other. Won't you tell me what's going on? Oh, I'm sorry. But there's some things you just can't tell. Jenny, have you lost your flutter? Oh, no. I'm fluttering something awful right now. Oh, come on. I'll take you back to the house. Oh, no. I have to go back alone. Uh, you wouldn't want Jeffers to see us come in together, would you? He, he might misunderstand. Professor Ronnie. 
Professor Ronnie. There's a new moon. Look over your left shoulder and make a wish. There's only one thing I wish. I wish you were back in Maple Leaf, Minnesota. It's a funny thing, but that's my wish, too. that we'll have to rehearse anymore. Good. Open those doors. My party's starting. I'm having an ocean between us when he finds out that I'm marrying you to his family. What do you mean? I mean that Caroline and I are ready to sail. But don't say bon voyage in a loud voice. This is supposed to be a very secret elopement. Paul, you mustn't do it. Well, we can try. But you don't love Carolyn. Oh, no, I can't let you elope. Oh, Jenny, I didn't think you cared. Oh, oh I do. Yeah, yes, I do. I care very much. I want to talk to you. You go out on the terrace, and I'll be right out there. <laughs> Jeffers, look, this is very important. Tell Mrs. Brand she's wanted on the terrace right away, will you? And don't tell her I sent you. I know, And ask her to hurry. Uh, yes, miss. Paul, how could you do this to me? Huh? If it's the difference in our ages, don't let that bother you. What is this? Oh, don't pretend. It's too late for that now. What do you want out of life? Love or money? Or how could you plan to go away without me? Have you forgotten the days when I was your dewy wildflower? I didn't know you fell this way. Oh, I do. And you do love me, don't you, Paul? Jenny, if I could afford to marry for love, I wouldn't be bothering with that loose-leaf cabbage. Paul. Darling. I'm not worth it. I've made a mess of my life, and I won't drag you into it. Oh, but at least promise me you won't marry Carolyn. You were cut out for finer things. You mean you'd marry me after all I've done? Love is all that counts, Paul. You're right. Money isn't everything. Well, I must say, Carolyn, it's you. You might as well know the truth. Here are your tickets. Come here. Come. Now, quiet. Quiet, everybody. I've got an important announcement to make. Jenny here is going to marry my grandson, Tom. It's a union of two old Swedish families. How could you keep a secret? Congratulations, Tom. Oh, Thanks, old man. Dear, I had him staked out for what myself a lucky all the time. You make a beautiful bride. Congratulations. Thanks, old man. Go ahead, old fellow. It's your last chance to kiss my bride. Hey, who's drunk? You or me? Ronnie! Ronnie, come here. It's your turn to kiss Tom's bride. I'll be right back, Tom. Say, who is she marrying anyway? Tom. Thanks. I'd like to send a telegram, please. Yes, to Miss Jenny Swanson. 1417 Larchwood Road, Long Island, New York. Yeah, 1417. And the message is, have suffered complete nervous breakdown. Please come home. 
at once. I need you, love, and Helga. And I'm telling you, I've got to see Olaf Brand. But, sir, I'm here to do him a favor, and if he doesn't see me, he's going to regret it. But he's having a party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the same, I'm going to see Olaf Brand if it's the last thing I do. Well, you're looking right at him. Oh, Mr. Brand, I'm sorry to disturb you, but my client is a poor man, and his injuries have turned out to be quite serious. In fact, the hospital surgeon says it's a broken hip. A client? A hospital? What hip? The left hip. The young lady said after the accident that you would pay his expenses. What accident? What expenses? For the broken hip. Now, if you'll let me explain in private. You see, I'm here to protect your family. And if you'll just call them together, Mr. Brand, I'm sure we can get it all settled quickly and privately. Tell that family line to come into the library. Yes, Mr. Brand. You come with me. Now, what's all this rigmarole about hips and accidents? Who are you? I'm Thomas Jameson. Oh, ambulance chaser, eh? Attorney, at your service. What's the matter, Jeffers? Is anything wrong? I don't know, Mrs. Brown. Mr. Brand wants the entire family in the lab. Come along, Jenny. We're wanted in the library. But Jeffers said only the family. You're in the family now. Sit down. Jenny? Ronnie, sit down. Now, what's this story of yours? I represent Tony Molino, who was run down and injured last night by a car leaving the Red Lion Inn. The car was driven by a man who gave us his name, Dr. Dennis Jeffers. The butler, son. We'll get to the bottom of this. Dr. Jeffers was accompanied by a young woman who promised my client that if he would refrain from reporting the accident to the police, she would arrange for a handsome settlement. She gave your name as a guarantee, Mr. Brand. She, she what? Who was she? The young lady gave us her name, Miss Jenny Swanson. Jenny? You heard what he said, Jenny? Is this true? Yes. I can't believe it. We'll get to you in a minute, Jeffers. My thought was to avoid unpleasant publicity that might involve you and your family unfavorably. Just what are you hinting at? Well, you see, they've been meeting there and having supper together several nights recently at the Roadhouse. And the general impression was that they were man and wife. My lawyer will see you tomorrow. Very well, Mr. Brand. I'm sure I can count on you to treat my client handsomely. He's a very poor man. Good night. Jenny, I can't figure this out. Is what he said true? Were you out with Dennis last night? Yes. It's not true. Jenny was out with me last night. We went for a drive and stopped at the Red Lion Inn for a drink. You're lying for her. I'm not. Obviously, there's been a little mix-up, but that's no reason for everyone to turn on Jenny. Why, Ronnie, you're in love with her. This is insane! You were out with Dennis. You're going to marry Tom. And, and Ronnie is in love with you. And Paul has just proposed to her. I'll, I'll get Dennis. This is all your fault. Oh. You've made a mess of everything around here. Oh. You've ruined my whole life. Oh, that's not true. She's trying to ruin my life, too. She even went as far as to blackmail me last night. Blackmail? Oh, wait a moment. Blackmail means taking money. Jenny, did you take money? Well, yes, I did, but... She told me oh. she'd been in an accident. Said she'd make up lies about Dennis and me unless I gave her $5,000 to pay the man. Oh, that's not true. If you cash the check, it'll come back from the bank. <laughs> What do you mean, I can't see him? He's having a most important family conference, Mr. Deaton. If you'll only wait. Wait, nothing. I came a long ways to see that old double-crosser, and I haven't much time to tell him all the things I've got to say. Very well, Mr. Deaton. I'll tell him you're here. Jenny, why did you try to blackmail Sylvia? Beg pardon, sir. Mr. Deaton and his son are outside. Shall I show them in? There you are, you old skinflint. 
A fine philanthropist you are, letting Brand University suffer just to keep all the glory to yourself. Hey, what's she doing in this house? She's going to marry me, that's what she's doing here. Hello, Jenny. Hello, Ted. You know Jenny? Know her, I should say I do. When she was at Brand New University, she tried to blackmail my son. Blackmail? Well, I may be dumb in some things, but I didn't let my son get hooked by a blackmailer. I'm sorry it was not blackmail. Your son did propose to her. She has his letters to prove it. Hello, Professor Brooke. Hello. Deny that. There were no letters. I was lying. There were letters. I was a coward and Jenny protected me. But I made a mistake then I'll never make again. I lost the sweetest girl in the world. And I was afraid to face you because she was a waitress. A waitress? But what, what, uh, what about Barmont? I haven't any right to ask you, Jenny, but I want to say it again. Will you marry me? Four men aren't enough. It had to be five. Jenny, weren't you at Brymont with Sylvia? Were you a waitress? What if I am a waitress? And what if Dennis is the son of your butler? Sylvia's in love with him, aren't you? And he's going to be a great doctor someday. I ought to say I'm sorry, Ronnie, but I know there's no reason to. Of course not. And you'll be better off. It'll be very handy having him in the family, and cheaper, too. You won't have to pay him $100,000 a year the way you do, Dr. Brown, so don't be a snob. Don't shout at me. I'm not a snob. I started life as a lumberjack. I rescued two men from the... But, Jenny, I'm all mixed up. How did you happen to come to this house? I met Jenny on the train, and she brought me home because I was drunk. <laughs> Stop eavesdropping! I want to tell this family just what I think of them. Get out! Get out! Don't go yet, Mr. Dayton. Everything is wrong with your family is due to your own selfishness and dishonesty. What? You've been so mean to them that they're afraid to come to you for help. You, you've always made fun of them and criticized them and forced them into doing things secretly. And you are dishonest. You cheated Card. <laughs> and you cheated Mr. Dayton. But you'd better give him back that option because if you don't, someday you'll have a flutter in your stomach. I've been having flutters all my life. Why else would I have three doctors? You don't need a doctor for a flutter. That's just your conscience telling you what to do, only you don't pay any attention to it. Now, there's a smart girl. You better listen to her, Olaf. I'll listen to her. But I'll double-cross you. I'll give that land to the university myself. How about it, Jenny? Will you marry me? Get out! I don't know who she's going to marry, but it's going to be somebody in my family. Now, get out! Get out! This is all very fine, but what about that $5,000 you blackmailed out of Sylvia? It was blackmail, all right. You see? You see? I told you. Scat! What's scat? I needed the money to buy back Tom's IOUs. He owed the money to Schultz the gambler, and it's your own fault Tom didn't tell you so himself. Every time he turned around, you threatened to disinherit him. Jenny, you did that for me. Telegram, Miss Watson. Jeffers. Uh... Yes, sir? What do you think of the idea of your son marrying my granddaughter? Well, Miss Sylvia's a little wild, sir. But Dennis is the right man for her. That's all I wanted to know. Dennis, it will be so nice having a doctor in the family. But I must insist that your first child should be a girl. Only... I don't think she should go to Briarmont. Now you're talking, Grandma. Grandma? Well, yes, of course, that's right. <laughs> Come along, Sylvia. Come uh, along, dear. Wait just a moment. Uh, this telegram concerns everyone. It's from Jenny's Aunt Helga. She says, uh, Dear Jenny, letter received. Stop. No place for sweet, innocent girl. Insist you leave at once. Don't worry about Tom. He's young, and with that profile, he's got a great future. Although you describe the professor in glowing terms, he sounds exceptionally stupid. Ever to have thought of himself as the right man for Sylvia. I've been convinced all along that he had more than an academic interest in you. In fact, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if, without the slightest encouragement, he... You know what I mean. Stop. As a matter of fact, dear Jenny, 
England, while the climate isn't all that it should be, is very well known for honeymoons. And it has the added advantage of being just across the channel from Paris. But Jenny, before we sail, you must promise me a few things. Yes, Professor Ronnie. Tom, I've had a hard day. Let's duck this party. Let's go out and paint the town red. Oh! 